Not the best time to come back, I'm afraid. Not a good session at all. It was a pretty horrible session after the horror session that we saw yesterday where the Australian market lost more than 2%. And what was surprising is that we did see a good lead from Wall Street with the S&P 500 increasing by 0.6% overnight. It was a little bit of a tepid start on the Australian share market, but those losses really accelerating quite quickly. And it was banking stocks in focus this afternoon. The banks seeing heavy selling, and it does look like it's been off sure selling. I guess it's, there's been a lot of turbulence in markets today and one of the most turbulent markets has been the currency markets where we have seen Japanese yen intervention. Last night we saw the Swiss National Bank cutting rates to almost zero there to try and bring down the Swiss franc which is also seen as a safe haven as the Japanese yen is. Now Japanese yen traders are amongst the biggest in terms of the retail market in the world making up about one third of yen trades on the global market and if we have a look at Japanese traders often they invest into Australia as well in fact there was a PwC report released last week saying that Australia is the second biggest destination for Japanese investors for our offshore investments we have a look at what they invest into though it's mostly bonds fixed interest as well as sometimes bank shares because of the high yields if I was a Japanese investor I would be wanting to hold on to those yen as it continued to fall because it would be good news for my investment so it doesn't really make too much sense to selling in bank shares because of the yen intervention however we know that the euro crisis the euro debt crisis still very firmly in focus and Italy is center of that at the moment so jitters in yeah. terms of the bank shares the Australian market down 1.3 percent I mean what are you seeing on the charts uh, a big drop off once we hit that 4300 mark uh, closing at 4276 and a half it was a new low for the market for 2011, closing on the low, so that's a short-term bearish signal for the market as well. 4,276 points was where we closed at, and that was also the low for the session. We did see some strong volumes going through the market today, $6.1 billion. Because we've broken that support now at 4,313 points, it looks like the next major support level to test is 4,175 points. So things looking quite bearish. It was interesting just talking about the banks there was a comment overnight um, which uh, I guess sheds light of the importance of timing and I forget who said uh, said the quote but saying that by um by making a mistake in terms of time, timing, it could be a number of years, even decades before dividends can pay off that mistake. So for investors, I guess it's one of the important things is timing, not only that long-term perspective. And in terms of that timing, investors are getting jitters because we are getting quite bearish signals on the charts. If we have a look at the Australian share market, we've seen a new low for 2011, now looking to test the lows for 2010. If we have a look at the major stocks as well. Rio Tinto was right on that support level. And if we have a look at Rio Tinto shares this is Rio Tinto shares over the last two years you can see that this support level we've bounced off it three times now tomorrow is going to be an important open for Rio Tinto and we've just seen that result roll in and if we have a look at the result the market expecting to see 8 billion US dollars instead we've seen underlying of 7.8 billion US dollars and a net of 7.6 billion US dollars so coming in slightly below expectation so that's going to be a key stock to watch in Australia tomorrow all the chips on the on the table all in, push them all into the centre and go for the bet. James, I still remember the global financial crisis and unfortunately I remember the energy sector with a PE ratio of just six back then and I remember thinking that that was cheap and buying in at those levels but at the moment compared to where we've been in the last two or three years it's very difficult to argue to jump in right now when the market is falling. I'd rather miss that first five percent than getting in ten to twenty percent too early in this type of market. We know that earnings are looking quite strong but it's not earnings driving the market at the moment it's those macro themes and they certainly haven't gone away we are seeing the US economy under a shadow of doubt in terms of whether or not we're going to see another recession if not a recession we're at we're going to see a slow amount of growth coming from the US for a long time. And then if you have a look at Europe, we're still looking at Spain and Italy. Both economies too big to fail. We're seeing the yields soaring there. And I guess the market just wondering what's in store over the next few months. Value is there, but we don't want to be jumping in too early. And if we have a look at the technicals, they are still pointing to quite a bearish move. So when the market does start to move up into another uptrend, that's when I'll be buying, not while it's falling. It's a little bit like catching a falling knife at the moment. <laughs> Just quickly.